So we go to Nehemiah. Nehemiah 13. And we're going to start at verse 15. In those days saw I in Judah some treading wine presses on the Sabbath and bringing in sheaves and lading asses. Asses is talking about cattle. As also wine, as also wine, grapes, and figs, and all manner of burdens, which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. So it's talking about the Sabbath, okay? It's what this all this stuff these people was doing on the Sabbath day, right? And I testified against them in the day wherein they sold victuals. So it's talking about selling. Selling victuals, all right? So this is going to explain buying and selling. I'm telling it to you how they taught. There dwelt men in Tyre, also therein, which bought, which brought fish and all manner of wear, wear victuals. So you're talking about food and uh, goods that you can buy and such. And sold on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. All right. Then it says, then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said unto them, what evil thing is this that ye do and profane the Sabbath day? So they're saying, hey, if they buying and selling uh, uh, any kind of food or wares on the Sabbath day, that means you're profaning the Sabbath. Right. Did your fathers thus? And did not our God bring all this evil upon us and upon this city? Yet ye bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. So he's saying the reason this is what they're teaching you. They're saying the reason that we got in all this trouble and under all these curses is because y'all was breaking the Sabbath by buying and selling on the Sabbath. Right. And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath, I commanded that the gate should be shut and charged that they should not open till after the Sabbath. And some of my servants set I at the gates that there should be no burden. Be There should no burden be brought in on the Sabbath day. All right. So they're telling you, you ain't supposed to be working and you're not supposed to be buying and selling. And they say, look. You go out to Walmart or Target or wherever, right? You are in violation of the Most High's law, all right? From reading those few scriptures, you should be confident that you defile the Sabbath by working and buying and selling, all right? Believe it or not, all those examples mean something different than you think spiritually. All of that verse is a parable. All of that story that we just read, that's a parable. Every portion of the Bible that you've been reading, the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Apocrypha, the entire thing is in parable form. We told you, go to Job 11 and 6. The scriptures are written double. There are wisdom and secrets in those scriptures, but you can't see them because you're listening to your God. Your God is that man standing uh, behind that pulpit. That's who your God is. Those leaders that you have in your organization, those are your gods. That's who you serve because they don't know what God is saying. All right. So let's go and uh, get a little bit of understanding of what Nehemiah said. In those days saw I in Judah some treading the wine presses on the Sabbath. Okay, what's wine presses? Hmm. We know that wine is a liquid. That's a doctrine. All right, we just read what liquids were. Wine is a doctrine. The person who's treading the wine press is the pastor. He's the one who's providing the wine. It's his doctrine, right? 
Nehemiah said, don't do that on the Sabbath. Just like the Most High said earlier. Y'all see how he's consistent with the Most High? The Most High said, don't preach on the Sabbath. That's what treading the wine press means. All right. When you tread the wine press, you're making wine. Right. That's working. All right. What's wine? Wine is a doctrine. So it's the pastor. It's that prophet that's treading the wine press. He said on the Sabbath, he saw people treading the wine press. All right. He talking about them pastors preaching on the Sabbath. So let's keep reading. He said they was treading the wine press on the Sabbath and bringing in sheaves. Hmm. Question comes. What are sheaves? Hmm. Let's go to Genesis 37 so you can know what these sheaves are. Notice we're giving you precepts for everything that he said. What are sheaves? We're going to Genesis chapter 37. We're going to start at verse 5. This is talking about that little dream that Joseph had that his brothers hated him for. All right. And Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it his brethren and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, here, I pray you this dream, which I have dreamed for behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. So it's talking about sheaves and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaves. Sheaves are men. All right. So sheaves are men. And somebody's gathering those sheaves. So let's read it again. What Nehemiah said. He said, uh, in those days, he saw some treading the wine press on the Sabbath. And bring it in sheaves. Who bring in the sheaves? The sheaves are people. Who's bringing in the sheaves into their church? That's the prophets. So Nehemiah is telling you they were defiling the Sabbath by preaching to the people. Just like the Most High said, take a day off. You see how Nehemiah is consistent with what the most high is saying, right? Amazing what happens when you start finding out what these, these words mean, all right? Then it said something about lading asses with burdens, all right? Y'all already know that asses are cattle, and spiritually, uh, the animals in the Bible are men. Asses are followers. Okay. But what's a burden? Hmm. Let's go to Malachi. All right. We're going to go to Malachi. I like Malachi. So you can find out what the burden is. Hmm. Malachi chapter one, verse one. The burden of the word of the Lord. To Israel by Malachi. Burden is the word. Asses are followers. That's the people. Who laden those asses with the word? It's talking about the prophets. The prophets was preaching to the people and laden in them with burdens, with their with their words. They're also physically laden the people by causing them to go out there and preach and do all of the support so that they can put their, 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 they can preach their doctrine out there on the street. Again, Nehemiah is consistent with what the most high told you. He said, take a day off. He said that they were defiling the Sabbath by going out there laden in those asses, those followers, with those burdens. The burden is the word. 
He talking about them preaching on the Sabbath. Y'all see that? Hmm. <laughs> Nehemiah said, don't do that. Just like the Most High said. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so this prophet is laden in the followers, uh, with teaching his word on the Sabbath. All right. So now, let's talk about these victuals. Victuals are food. Now, y'all see how this thing going. <laughs> they sold victuals, right? Victuals are food, carnally. But they are beliefs, spiritually. Now, they got this story in Joshua, right? About how he was dealing with these Gibeonites, right? And how they tricked Joshua into becoming servants so the Most High wouldn't destroy him. Because they had heard all the stories about how when the children of Israel crossed that Jordan River, they came through slaying folks, right? We're going to go to that story. And you're going to get a good understanding about buying and selling. All right. We're going to Joshua. Chapter 9. We're going to start at verse 8. So this, this is the Gibeonites telling they lie to Joshua. So that they can become servants and not be killed. All right. Verse 8. And they said unto Joshua, We are thy servants. And Joshua said unto them, Who are ye? And from whence come ye? And they said unto him, From a very far country, thy servants are come because of the name of the Lord thy God. For we have heard of the fame of him and all he did in Egypt. Now they actually, they're neighbors, but they're lying saying they're from a faraway country. But they're scared, right? Okay. And then they say, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond Jordan, to Sihon, king of Heshbon, and Og, king of Bashan, which was in Ashtaroth, which was at Ashtaroth. Wherefore, our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake to us, saying, take victuals, victuals with you for the journey. And go to meet them and say unto them, we are your servants. Therefore, now make ye a league with us. This is our bread. We took hot for our provisions out of our houses on the day we came forth to go unto you. But now behold, it is dry and moldy. The bread is dry and moldy. And these bottles of wine, which were filled, were new. And behold, they are rent. And these are garments. And these our garments and our shoes are become old by reason of the long, of the very long journey. Verse 14. And the men took of the victuals and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. And Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live. And the princes of the con congregation swear unto them. Let's go back to 14 because the man described he got all these victuals. They old, moldy, spoiled. And it says, and the men took of their victuals. It's saying they ate the victuals. Now, do you think the children of Israel, here they are, they conquering nations, right? But they're going to take old moldy bread and all of these victuals and they're going to eat it? Who would do that? Because it ain't talking about food. It's talking about beliefs. They sold them a lie. All right? They caused them to believe a lie. Buying and selling has to do with buying and selling doctrines. Not buying and selling with money. 
It's talking about buying and selling doctrine. The victuals that they took was the lie that the Gibeonites told. That's what the Most High telling you. You got to know what these words mean. Victuals means doctrine. All right. It's talking wares and victuals. Buying and selling of doctrine. That's what it's talking about. Let's go. Give you some more proof. We're going to go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 23. In verse 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. All those things are doctrines. Buy and sell doctrines. That's what it's talking about. All right. They sold the children of Israel a lie and they bought it. Y'all see that? That's what Nehemiah is saying. That's what Nehemiah is saying they was doing on the Sabbath. Buying and selling doctrine. Buying and selling is teaching lies on the Sabbath. It ain't talking about shopping at Target or Walmart. Nehemiah said, don't do that on the Sabbath, just like the Most High said. Those pastors who are buying and selling doctrines on the Sabbath, preaching those lies, are in violation of the Sabbath. That's how you defile the Sabbath. All right. Again, this is how the, the scriptures get taught in the wrong fashion. We are not telling you what to believe. The Most High said he is only accepting willing offerings. He said he wants a spiritual offering. They are teaching you the carnal offering. Now, finally, they teach uh, to the, the final element of keeping the Sabbath holy. You must convocate and have a holy gathering. All right. That means the way that they teach it. You must physically come to their church to get the word. And while you're there, you might be encouraged to give some alms or an offering. Maybe they're having a bake sale or something you can support the ministry with while you're there. They use Hebrews 10. All right. Hebrews 10. And 25. This is the justification for that holy convocation. Right? Because that's the last element of the Sabbath. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. So they're saying, uh, when it's saying not forsaking that assembling of ourselves together, they say that's talking about church. That's the day you're supposed to go to church. He's commanding you to go to church. That's what that means. That's what they're telling. But that's a carnal offering. What does it mean spiritually? I'm glad you asked. Let's go to Zephaniah. <laughs> Two and one. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. It's talking about the gathering of the nation. It ain't saying gathering in a church. It's talking about gathering and understanding. Meaning we're gathering the church to believe the same spiritual doctrine. That's the gathering. Psalms. We're going to Psalms. Chapter 50 and verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. What's the sacrifice? Sacrificing the old man. That's the sacrifice. A spiritual sacrifice. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Chapter 30. In verse 3, that then the Lord 
thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God have scattered thee. The righteous are everywhere, right? Because remember, what they say is, well, uh, you know, that proves our point. The Israelites were scattered all over the world. Yeah. Okay. So in the in the chapter right before that, right, he says something, right? We're going to go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 10. And he's about to tell you who's all standing here, right? That he's telling this to, all right? Ye stand this day, all of you before the Lord. So he's talking about the whole congregation, your God, your captains of your tribes, your elders and your officers with the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and thy stranger that is in thy camp. From the hewer of wood unto the drawer of water, that thou shouldest enter into covenant with the Lord thy God and into his oath. So you mean to tell me everybody out there is taking that oath? Let me read it again. Your captains of your tribes, your elders and your officers with all the men of Israel your little ones, your wives, and thy stranger. All of them took the oath. That verse 12, that thou shouldest enter into covenant with the Lord thy God and into his oath, which the Lord thy God maketh with thee this day, that he may establish thee today for a people unto himself. He just said those strangers are his people too. He just said it. So he telling you those strangers got scattered too. So they got to be redeemed. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 30. We'll just start at verse 1. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee and blessings and the curse which I have set before thee and thou shalt call him to mine among all the nations, whither the Lord thy God have driven thee. He drove those strangers with them, because they all were Israel. He's calling all of them children of Israel, his people, and shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according to all that I commanded thee this day, and thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thine soul, and that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God has scattered thee. That's what it's talking about. That's the gathering, the gathering of all people. Because we just showed you in the chapter before, he included the strangers as his people. But believe what you want. <laughs> We've showed you in countless classes. Everybody can get it. If you want to follow the doctrine that said you got to be the carnal seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in order to get the kingdom, which is a carnal interpretation of what it's saying, Listen, we're not telling you what to think. You can go and follow whoever you want. But we just read it. That them strangers took that oath. And now he gathering everybody to include those strangers. Because he said he was going to send them into captivity too. We ain't saying every stranger going to get. But if they convert. They can get it. That's what he said. But believe what you want. So, nonetheless, 
The Sabbath is speaking about a different convocation in spirit. He is allowing the people to learn of him in spirit and be gathered together in understanding. That's the convocation. These carnal houses and churches are the exact prison houses the Most High said they would be because they teach and hate in them. They teaching you that the stranger can't get the kingdom when I just read it to you that he called the stranger his people. But again, you got the right to believe what you want. We ain't telling you what to do. We just telling you what it's saying. All right. We have to reject their understanding and begin to learn what Christ is telling us spiritually. If you view this class carnally, you will continue to believe that if you cook on the Sabbath or buy and sell or even work, you cannot be redeemed. If you don't go to that prison house that you call a church every Sabbath, you can't be redeemed. That's the carnal understanding. All right. We are not telling you what to do. We're telling you that those are Jewish fables. Okay. If you believe spiritually, you can focus on avoiding arguments and debates with your brother on the Sabbath and preaching lies on the Sabbath and concentrate on learning the spiritual doctrine so Christ can say, well done, good and faithful servant at the end, at the last trump. That's all I have. I hope you enjoyed the class. I hope you got something from it. Uh, again, you can like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification button. And when we upload a new video, you'll be notified uh, by YouTube. All right. So with that, I'm going to bid you. Shalom.